All right. So everyone has always been icing to get Mal on. Uh, and not just to kind of pop, pop a head in and, and give a wave, but to get her on the uh, on the panel. And I thought that's a great opportunity to have this discussion, which is the whole uh, French comic books thing. And I imagine, because I didn't know about it either, that a lot of people in the chat just aren't aware of it, that there is this entire separate industry that exists in comics. And, you know, per, per, people probably know a bit of it, like Tintin or Asterix or something. Uh, but it's it's massive and it's it's a bit like manga in that you know it's it comes from one country it's got its own culture its own thing and it's huge there and on top of that it doesn't seem to to bleed in to what's going on in english speaking countries like america I england australia like we all sort of read marvel and dc that's what we do but um mel has told me that they don't, you don't read that over there, do you? It's not like no. Spider Man and Batman aren't the biggest comics that people no. read at all. No. Uh, there's no. this entire yeah. different thing. And it, it's, I mean, it seems pretty healthy. I've got a, um, I've got an article here that we can have a look at. Uh, maybe you'll be able to help us uh, read this, Joe. Sure. Yeah, if you're, uh, if your French is going well, it's all in French. Oh, so, sure. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna but, fake uh, it till I make it. I, I studied <laughs> for three years in high school, but that was yeah, decades ago. Uh, 53 million, and they call them albums, uh, which you know it mostly refers to things like this. Give it the old knock. Um, were sold uh, in 2020. Yeah, uh, one and, in uh, five books. Sold yeah, so one in one in five books in France that was sold in 2020 were a comic of some kind. 20%. A graphic novel, uh, a manga, yeah. a, a kid's kind of cartoon strip thing. Yeah. I don't know what it's like in America, but I can't imagine it's anywhere near that. No, no, not e no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, yeah. And so this is what, when, when I traveled to France, I was just shocked that you would walk into, there's they, stores, like see this image you're looking at here. There's stores like this that are just like this. That's all there is. And it's all just kind of cool stuff you haven't heard of, or maybe there's some re really big French ones. They do actually have a section for Batman and Superman. It's like a tiny little section in the corner of trade paperbacks that just like no one cares about. Um, but not only that, you'll find this in, uh, you know, smaller versions in supermarkets. You'll be out there. That's where I first bought this book here, which is what inspired me to turn the Lucent into a graphic novel. I found that next to some shampoo in a in a shopping center in a supermarket. La BD est en pleine forme. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was cute. <laughs> uh, Vanessa says, "Damn, comics be killing it in France. They really are." And and yeah. here's the thing. Here's the thing that when you know we sort of started doing what we're doing here in, in cg the things that sell are the premium books that are released semi-regularly these aren't monthlies like maybe these are once or twice a year in in good premium quality formats I mean, this sounds familiar to a lot of you i'm sure uh and and th so and these guys like some of the art i remember someone posted a thread of the french artists and I'm telling you, it was hundreds of artists that would be top premium tier sitting right up next to Ethan and Roquefort and the top guys in CG. And there's hundreds of them because they're spending a year putting out these premium books. Uh, they're obviously not crowdfunding them. We don't know who they are because they're not sort of running in these circles. But, you know, they sell them in these French supermarkets and or like bookstores. In a bookstore, there'll be a massive section of just comic books. It's it really is a totally different culture. Mm. And um, let's. Uh, are there any are there any key figures yeah, yeah, you want to pull out of here? So with COVID, they were expecting to have a two percent drop, and it actually turned into a nine percent growth of comic book sales. Um, and they weren't only selling newer comics that they have a well they think that um a lot of people were buying older older albums as we call them um 
to complete their collections and things like that. So there's a lot of older Asterix and Tintin and all that that were sold. Um, but yeah, massive, massive amount of um, new ones as well. Of course, manga is still enormous, like really big in France. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see and, Akira there yeah, on the shelf yeah. and some other stuff that looks pretty manga-y. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge thing over there and it starts really early. So you start your kids, um, most kids read, um, even Clark has some comic books comics in his um child you know s special books um he you yeah you get them started really 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 early clark is our three-year-old for anyone who <laughs> sorry yeah. who isn't aware um and so victoria is nine and uh let me just bring out this point that passion said japan and french respect comics way more than the u.s uh I get that feeling as well. Like when I, I bought some, some of these, I brought them home uh, when, when I was in France, sorry, staying with Mel's family, I brought them back to the house and Mel's dad picked them up and was reading them. And that just would never, like my, my dad, imagine if I brought home a, you know, a Batman, he would never read it. That's kid stuff. That's, that's like garbage, you know, but in France, everyone reads these things, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. You, you grow up reading them and then you keep and reading you never, them. You never stop, yeah. And adults usually tend to read the, you know, Blake and Mortimer is uh, one of the top sellers in France. It's um, spy kind of books. Um, so adults love those things. And um, and the Tintin and the Asterisk. And the, my, my dad, I mean, we have a huge number of albums in, in our house in France. It's Which one of these is Blake and Mortimer? Is that oh, that's Lucky no, Luke. That's Lucky, Lucky Luke. That's the top seller. Is the number yeah. one seller in France. So this is quite different to what we're used to. This is sort of like more strip comic, and it's it's been around forever. Mo Biggs was uh, saying, uh, what does he say? The Lucky Luke sales spiked because of toilet paper shortages. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't expect there to be much crossover going to happen between what we're used to reading and want to read in comics and lucky luke like i don't get it but uh, i, I love mean it. <laughs> the french love it they I love, love it. Like a sunday morning like yeah sunday like sunday newspaper funnies jo uh, Sun jo yeah the, the sunday funnies is what we used to call them and yeah uh drew says i don't really count them as comic books they're comic strips yeah they, they are quite different that that's right but so uh, there's other ones um this one, which oh, this, this is, is Mortimer. This is Blake and Mortimer, yeah. Yeah, so the and, and you know, yeah. it is it's quite a different layout. It, it's it's very European. I mean, it looks European. Uh, funnily enough, this comic is set in the same village as where Mel's uh parents live in, and it actually does look like this. It's very cool, but you know, I, I dig this art. I mean, this is storytelling, you know, this is this is a it, what did you say? It's like a detective spy yeah, yeah yeah kind of story yeah it's not my thing but yeah people love it <laughs> yeah, it's 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 massive it's it sells yeah. huge and people that's the thing like adults read this and that's that's the difference that's that's what i'm talking about when you get to the culture you know they it's not looked down on it's respected mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a, it's a proper um you know, way to tell a story that, that that people that people take seriously and respect. I can't remember what this one is. Oh, I forgot the name. It's um, I've I'd never heard of it. So it's about um, seventy year olds who are up to no good. Uh, it's called. But it's very cool. popular. It's very yeah. Popular. It's uh, it's the uh, tenth bestseller. Yeah, in, and, uh, and when we say bestsellers, I mean these things are selling huge numbers. Oh yeah. It's not like in. It, uh, I mean, Batman does sell pretty well, but like, imagine Batman in every every grocery store, every bookstore, like uh, in huge numbers, everywhere, and everyone reads it. To put uh, it into context for people uh, in the United States, you know, these days Batman is doing well if it sounds eighty thousand in a month, and in the you know, in the 80s, uh, late 80s, early 90s, X-Men was selling uh, on average about 500 to 800,000 a month, depending on the year. And so if you were to kind of translate that over 
um, you know, like kind of translate the French numbers over to the U.S. You know, if we if we if Batman does well when it sells eighty thousand, then imagine if it was selling eight hundred thousand. Mm. Yeah. Here we've got some of the the top ten. Uh, they call them BDs, which yeah. are yeah, essentially these kind so of books. It says forty two percent of the sales are for mangoes, and then the rest is those. Uh, French style BTs. Yeah. So you got Lucky Luke. Yeah. Uh, this one is called Arab of the Future, The Adventures of Blake and Mortar, which we just saw, Asterix, which everyone probably knows. Uh, now there's this one here, Mortel Adele. One, two, three, four. He's got four. This guy has four yeah. uh, graphic novels or like comics, it's, essentially, yeah, comics, in the yeah. top 10. And we know about this one because. This is this is what uh, Victoria is into. Yeah. She's massive into it, and she just got a new one. And you said sorry. it was twenty five bucks. This is whoa, sorry, I need oh, to put yeah. it there. <laughs> <laughs> no, it won't work. It won't um, work. Anything that's uh, green ish. Have you got uh, it? Isn't that blue? Hang on. Have you got it? There you go. Green? Oh, there you go. I need to open yeah. it anyway. She's a little turd. I love her so much. Um, she's up to no good. Um, she tries to sell her parents. Um, she doesn't like anybody really. Um, and she calls everyone ugly, and I love her. Um, but anyway, it's it's really fun. Um, the guy who wrote it is a is a genius. So he's, um, I don't know how many albums were sold, but he's got about fifteen of those. Sorry, of course it's green albums. And recently, Victoria was given this. He's like the he's like the French um, dog man, yeah. Yeah. So this was 25 euros, and in it you have this gorgeous cover. So you get the box. Cover. You see how it sinks? It's kind of familiar. Beautiful you get the album. collector's box. Yeah, this is and, a full-on, like it is a proper, it's a proper book. So it's not the comic strips like the other little albums. And you've got a little passport in it, and you can write stuff in it. Victoria, I'm sure, did already. Stickers, a little notebook, uh, a little bracelet so 25 euros is not much at all and those character cards um, how familiar is all this you know it's like it's yeah. kind of almost the same price point as well and all the little goodies yeah. and you know this is what they're selling and 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 victoria is eating this stuff up and they've yeah. got figures now and everything and it, it's obviously it's huge in france yeah. and you know this is how you get people uh kind of hooked on reading graphic stories on reading comic books uh, you know when we were yeah when we were kids comics you know growing up in the 70s 80s comics were intended for all ages so they were basically written for adults but they were safe for kids to read and parents could either give their kids comics that were geared toward kids you know let's say preschool through i don't know eight years old ten years old something like that but a lot of times kids would gravitate towards the books that were on the grocery store, you know, shelves or the gas station rack or the spinner rack at the drugstore. And, and a, a parent could buy a Batman or a Spider-Man comic and not worry, you know, about their kid having nightmares afterwards. Mm. And you had that progression of what you guys are talking about in France, where they start reading very young and they continue reading all the way into adulthood. And now, like you guys were saying with Melanie's parents, you still have adults that are, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. into their elderly years who had never stopped reading. And in America, we used to have that to a lesser degree, but you still could have people who started when they were kids and read all the way into their elderly years. And, mm. you know, now, unfortunately, um, we don't have that anymore hardly at all. Some yeah, of us are going to try all. and bring it back, though. It, well, it, it, I started when I was 11, fell in love with comics, Spider-Man, Ghost Rider, uh, you know, that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I collected right up until about 15, 16, and then it started to wane because you just, it, when you get to that age, you you find you're the only one interested in it. And to read them now and to buy them, you got to, you know, travel out to the comic book shop. Yeah. And, you know, when I was 16, that meant, you know, two buses and a train. Uh, and I loved it. It was great. I had fun. But it's not like it's super accessible to everyone. And then eventually you just, you know, it doesn't didn't, didn't take much. For me, it was Marvel, you know, trying mm -hmm. to milk every last cent out of me. Yeah. that I, I just let it slide. But in France, it's, I mean, it's everywhere. So why would you give up? And I, they, I, I think that we, you know, as people who are trying to kind of rebuild 
some kind of semblance of an industry uh you know we look to look to what they're doing in japan but definitely look at what they're doing in france and how they're handling it oh yeah for sure the the fact is that you have to have products in front of people wherever they're going to be at mm -hmm. you can't put them in a specialized store hidden away somewhere and expect them to find it like I grew up with comics my entire life. I think I saw my first spinner rack when I was four years old at a drugstore. I didn't go into my first comic shop till I was 17 because I had to have my own vehicle and be able to drive there like you, Mike. I didn't have one nearby, but there were comics at the drugstore. There were comics at the grocery store, the gas station, the lobby of the dentist's office. That's where I saw my first digest. <laughs> it was an amazing Spider-Man digest, you know, a little one like the Archie comics, black and white. And I was absolutely mesmerized. I was maybe five years old. This book. Now, I wouldn't be do. I wouldn't be sitting here right now if it wasn't for this actual book. I'm not talking about like. I'm talking about this actual book that I'm holding in my hands right now. I picked this up. I was just walking around. Mel and her parents were shopping somewhere, and I was just like, "Well, I'm just going to walk around." And I came across a whole bunch of hardcover graphic novels. Mm. You know, next to the shampoo, and I was, and I picked it up. And you'll be able to see the influence. I've shown this before on stream, uh, but you'll be able to see like why I'm making the lucent the way I am. And I opened up to this page, and I was like, "What? You can make comics like that? Yeah, how awesome is?" That? And I just I had a kind of a lightning bulb moment. What a and layout! Yeah, exactly. It was just so different to what I remembered from you know uh spider-man back in in the mid 90s uh stuff mm -hmm. like that i was just totally blown away so of course i snapped it up and uh and you know it doesn't it doesn't end there these guys yeah it's like us they can spend six months to a year uh d drawing this stuff uh, I, <laughs> I don't see long arms guy in that guy. no no that guy <laughs> that guy's called Mattia laufrey I'm probably slaughtering his name, but not much. His, his, my, uh, <laughs> what was that? She, she said, not much at all. <laughs> it's not Mattiao. It's Mathieu. It's Mathieu. 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 Yeah. Mathieu yeah. I apologize. <laughs> uh, he's my oh, favorite. I need out of a all drink after that. Guys. Oh my God. And uh, do French books have ginger in hands as well? Look, I, but I tried to emulate it, but you know, it was just like, you know, doing my first comic. But check out this one. This is by a guy. Comment. Well, I'm not going to say names anymore. No, you're not. But, you're uh, not. <laughs> just amazing. Just really amazing art. Like you would back that if you saw that in a crowdfund. Come on. Just yeah, beautiful that's stuff. And his. Uh, let me show. It's really unique styles. Um, oh, there's one page I should have done. I should have found these earlier. But uh, you know, look at that. Just yeah. beautiful. Uh, there's a one. There's a Long John Silver talking about pirates. That's by that uh, Mathieu guy. <laughs> chicken, chicken um, planks, Joe. Chicken planks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. Check that out for a cover. Someone said earlier there were uh, a great Western books in oh, coming out yeah. of France. It's Absolutely, of and this is one of them. If um, for people in the chat who are familiar with the artist uh, Morbius also known as Jean oh, Giraud. Yeah. Uh, there was a, 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 an incredibly popular Western uh, comic that he uh, drew called Blueberry. And it never really caught on in the United States. And I'm convinced it's because of the name, uh, because the art was incredible. Yeah, I mean, why wouldn't you spend that money in this book? Like, it's just crazy. M Michael's favorite story is... It's 10 minutes down the road from my parents, and it's this very small town, and there's a massive comic book shop. With yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's beautiful. And you, you like, come out, and you've spent 100 euros easy because you're imagine, yeah. you Imagine you're it. in just small town America. You know, how many people, like, I don't know how many people live in the village, you know, maybe 3,000 or whatever. You've got, you know, a butcher, a, a, a couple of bakeries, and, and you've got this kick-ass comic book store. <laughs> And it's just full to the brim. It, it's My, so different. People were called, asking it, about Valerian. My, uh, this, yep. I can't believe what? you said bakery. 
It's oh, a boulanger. <laughs> Bless you, Joe. Bless you. Thank you. Where is there's a cool <laughs> that is a beautiful cover, I have to say. Yeah, this is that same guy, Mathieu. Um, hmm. you know, if all this if all the CG books like that, I would die happy. Yeah. In that article, it said that the French artists aren't getting paid very well for those books. So we were saying they would absolutely kill it in the uh, crowdfunding scene and they probably should consider it. That's what I thought. That's the first thing because I was getting, I was, I got these books and I was, you know, started making my own and, and uh, people were doing Patreon and everything, but then the crowdfunding boom happened. And I just thought, wow, these French guys are going to come in here and just make a killing because you know, the, the art is so off off the chain, and they're they're just they're used to competing in this market of uh, you know really highly creative, in, in, unique, independent stories. But yeah, they're, they're not they're not here, and I don't see them coming over anytime soon. I haven't seen them in any crowdfunding. It's, it has been very uh, American focused. Uh, Simon says it's time to kidnap some French artists. Well, it sounds like, and if they're not getting paid much, um, uh, you know, why not? Uh, Matt, what about says maybe they aren't aware of it? They have to be, surely. I don't yeah, know. I, mean, I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure of it. Uh, time to groom some French artists. <laughs> it really, it's it's real. It's really bizarre to me that all these stories. Um, and I've read a lot of them as best as I can. Uh, they, you know, they're great stories, fantastic-looking books, uh, but they're just not—they're just not reaching over. And I don't know why. It could be—they could be the language. Ask them anyway, now. Anyway, I wanted to say something. Um, okay. Because we're talking about pushing people to read the comics. Um, Bully Bill was my favorite when I was a kid. Um, I used to, I read every single album really. Um, I've got a big one here. It looks like Clifford Joe. Jo. It's yeah, it's cute. similar for sure. Super cute. Um, and this was given to my dad when he went to eat at Buffalo Grill, which is a chain restaurant. So if they're really pushing it, um, you know, they will sell, they will give you a towel as well and things like that. So they, it's, they it's sell it at the restaurant. They don't sell it. They give it. They give it away. Wow. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's, it's everywhere you go. It's everywhere. Um, my favorite thing when I was a kid was reading Gemnia, which is, you know, to learn to read bigger stories. And at yeah, the you know that. Is, who knows that? <laughs> no, I'm saying <laughs> they don't know. They don't understand what Gemlia means. Oh, I yeah. No. <laughs> I love to read. Yeah. So anyway, and this, oh, bloody hell, it's all green. <laughs> 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 i'm so unlucky anyhow um yeah so one of the biggest sellers is called look at his face like he's such a weird looking kid anyway it's called anatole la tuile and they're so popular that they're actually now making cartoons out of those characters and they are exploding so they're kind of like pushing um the industry on both sides through television and the comic book industry um, Simon and Seven says the French Conan books are great. Yeah, this is that same guy, uh, Mathieu, uh, doing Conan. And this is uh, Leroy, you know, why I like these painted covers? Mm -hmm. Uh, it's it's because of this guy, he, he's a concept artist as well. So he does he does uh, these painted covers and then and then his interiors, uh, are more traditional style. So I pretty much based the look of the Lucent. I, well, I didn't base it. I, I got inspired by this guy initially. Um, yeah, but you know, we yeah no, he doesn't he doesn't do much uh, in the way of ginger root hands. If if in France it's it's they've got all these comic books, right? Like you're saying, mm -hmm. how's the culture like different than here? Because we have conventions, and you know, I mean, there's there's really hardcore followers of different artists. Yeah, How's that work in France? Yeah, so there's no conventions as such, but there's a lot of, um, we call them festival, which is, I, I don't know how to translate it. It would be the festival. same thing, I reckon. Yeah, <laughs> it's a festival. Well, it's it's just to promote books in the same way, but there's no like funky dressing and things like that that you would see. I Yeah, US. I would imagine it would be more Very like the, the, the book, book fair industry. 
you know, it's not so much propping these guys up as superstars like right. happens here, where it's more just about the, the industry itself. Yeah, there, there's uh, a big one in Paris, Mel. I'm not sure when it started. It may have been after you moved there, but hmm. um, before COVID, I had heard that uh, it was had gotten quite large. I can't remember what it's called, though. Well, there's the in Paris. I'm aware of the Salon du Livre, which is every single year and okay. it promotes every single kind of book. Uh -huh. um, and then the other, the biggest festival I'm aware of is in Angoulême. Um, that's the national one, but there's so many across. But you country. imagine if it's one in five books, uh, comic or graphic novel, that would be a massive part of whatever book right. festival is happening. Uh, so it's not like we'll be able to replicate that, but we can we can steal some of their some of their ideas. I had now, a... like I said, we thought we're we're doing cool new stuff with crowdfunding here yeah. by having boxes with trading cards and it, <laughs> these guys are doing it and they're selling millions to kids mm -hmm. across the country. Uh, so you know we we need to catch up. Uh, yeah, and the. The commitment to perpetuating an art form has roots in France that go way back centuries farther back in history than in the U.S. You know, we're, we're still trying to figure out, well, is it really worth preserving traditions from one century to another? And so uh, we, we've got a lot that we could learn uh, when it comes to preserving art forms and culture and whatnot. Well, all right, guys, uh, we are going to have to end it here. I do have work to do. So thank you so much for hanging out with us. How to the chat. Thank you, everyone who's asked uh, questions and uh, made jokes and left uh, super chats. That's so generous. Uh, very appreciative of all of that. Thank you all so much for hanging out. I hope you liked Mel. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the show. Bye. Bonsoir. Hi, guys. The Lucent Waking Dream is my 60-page graphic novel. It's available now in demand on Indiegogo. Every backer not only gets the main book, they also receive a 10-page preview of the second book in the series, Painted Death, plus two full-color prints. You can also find me on Twitter, at The Lucent Comic. Why not come hang out with us?